Ooh, well, I'm excited to be here today, Victoria, talking about crowdfunding for authors. And uh, it's always a pleasure to work with you on this. And we've got some authors in the room. We've got some aspiring authors in the room. I know we've got folks that we've talked to who have books that need a little bit of refreshing uh, to be brought back out in the world again. And it doesn't really matter where you are in your book journey. This is what I've really enjoyed, Victoria, about our conversations over the years is that it doesn't matter where we are in our book journey, crowdfunding can apply for all different steps in the process. And to me, that just gets me really excited. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's such a helpful tool and, and it's such a flexible tool. Yeah. And, um, you know, today we're going to talk sort of probably more the more traditional routes, but the, you will allude to some of those other options as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but I think probably... Perfect. Great place to start is introductions. Mm -hmm. So um, shall I introduce you first, Charmaine? Sure, and then I will do the same for you. Thank you. So Charmaine is an 11 times best-selling author, five of her own books featured in 11 others, and two more ready for release. She is a certified professional speaker and expert in collaboration, funding dreams, and bringing projects to life. Her company, Raise a Dream, has helped many clients implement her strategies to make her, their book a business. Over the years, she has raised millions of dollars for projects she's been involved with, for charities that she supports, and for her own projects, and in collaboration with her clients. She has sold thousands of books through collaborative campaigns, sponsorships, and bulk buys. <laughs> I love bulk buys. <laughs> so please meet Charmaine Hammond. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to introduce Victoria and some of the interesting things that you might not know about Victoria if you have met her. So she hails from the UK and she's been in Canada now for about 18 years. One of the things that continues to surprise me. And in fact, every time I do this intro, Victoria, I still kind of get a little chuckle out of this, that um, you have a background in biochemistry. You studied yes. biochemistry and I at university. Need to grab my biochemistry book when you say that. So I can prove it. Um, I've got one on my, a few on my shelf actually, but they don't get open very often. Um, yeah, so uh, did biochemistry um, at university. Don't really use it very much, um, but the data analysis skills are very useful. <laughs> Well, and I, that's the connect, right? The data analysis mm -hmm. skills, that's the connect between crowdfunding because she is an exquisite marketer, folks. She has an extensive background uh, working in the field of marketing with brands that we are all very familiar with, such as Tide and Pampers, uh, NMAX, TD. And before she actually set up her own consulting practice, which is I think about nine years ago now, she was providing strategic marketing support and coaching and is running crowdfunding campaigns. What really is exciting for all of you and will make you feel very comforted in the content that you're receiving today is that Victoria has actually been involved in over 100 campaigns now, 100 crowdfunding campaigns. And put your seatbelts on for this result. <laughs> Through all these campaigns that she's done over the years, she's raised $20 million, over $20 million through these campaigns. So what that tells us about Victoria is that she has a lot of experience, a lot of background. She's worked on all kinds of campaigns. This is what's really interesting for me is the campaigns that Victoria has been involved in are not all author projects. And so she's able to pull information from each of these different types of campaigns that she's done and having worked on many different platforms which you're going to hear her speak about today so she is very experienced we've known each other now for jeepers i think it's about five years we've worked together on different projects we support each other on different projects as we both have our own business and i think the best part for me is we've become really really good friends yeah. So, yeah. Welcome, Victoria. <laughs> and I was going to say to people, put your seatbelts on, get your <laughs> pens and paper out or your tablet, whatever you're going to take notes on, because there will be lots of information. And for those of you that have been on crowdfunding calls with us before, um, you know just how big the process is of crowdfunding. It's, it's a journey. 
to get there. And what we hope to do today is break down some of those pieces. And what we've heard from people that have participated in our programs is that that repetition is really important, that repetition of learning. Um, because if you've never done a crowdfund before, there's a lot of new in it. It's sort of like, if we think about it from the author perspective, when you write that first book, think about how much you had to learn. <laughs> And then there's the whole, now we've got to market the book. Now we've got to sell the book. And Judy, you're probably smiling here because you work with authors and you know how much goes into just the getting the book done. So it's a really big process. And we're going to um, break these down into pieces as we go through our time together. Yeah. So I'm actually going to ask you a question first okay. Charmaine, because I think it's perfect just really good for context and especially if anyone hasn't been part of our previous mm -hmm. calls why is it important to properly fund a book oh it's a brilliant question I'm going to answer this and and from the perspective of the author first of all and then from the perspective of an entrepreneur it's really important to fund your book properly so that what you produce is really professional. Judy and I were having, Judy, Victoria and I were actually having a conversation about that um, the other day. Having a book that, as Judy would say, you're proud of. Um, having a book that is error free. I just looked at an author's book uh, during COVID and her name was spelt wrong on the cover. And so and she, <laughs> she already had a thousand copies and she thought she wanted to just sell them anyways. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. And I, my heart went out to her. So editing, having people look at your graphics, all of this is what helps create a professional looking book. But then there's also what's between the covers of that book. And we want that to be well done. Then there's the whole marketing and launching part of a book where um, this is where things can get costly sometimes for authors. And often it's a case of we don't know what we don't know. For those of you that are authors, give me a heck yes in the chat box if you get that. We don't know what we don't know when we're starting. I know, Kelly, you've worked with so many authors as well. And, you know, we just don't know what we don't know. And that can sometimes be dangerous and costly. And I've seen some heck yeses. So you all get it. So that's one of the other reasons it's it, it's important to properly fund our book is because the mistakes that we make um, can be actually quite damaging for our brand. And many of you are authors, but you also have other parts of business that you work in. Maybe you're a coach. Maybe you're a speaker. Maybe you have online programs. Maybe you have a job and your writing is, is sort of your passion. But we all have different worlds that we navigate in. And what happens is if the book is not professionally done, it can actually impact the other parts of your business. And we don't want that to happen. Victoria, mm -hmm. you've heard me answer this question probably a gazillion times. Is there anything that you're thinking that I needed to hone in on on that? Or did no, I cover I mean it? One of the things that always surprises me is I think the number you've often said is that mm. the average number of books that an, an author um, sells is 250. And I think some people even say that's a high number. And mm -hmm. I think that's quite shocking considering the time and effort to put a book together. And you you write a book typically to be read. And right. so, you know, that's, I think, one of the other, you know, massive challenges. So, you you know, if you're putting all that effort in, you want to make sure that it gets out there, gets the right people, gets to the right places and actually gets seen. So, yes. um, yeah, I think that's that's one of the things. Um, and I think the other thing that, and I, I emphasized it because you always talk about it and I, I don't mean that in a negative way, but it's just, I find it really interesting, your, your whole bulk buys. So mm. you're always looking at, you know, not selling onesies, twosies, but looking at sort of one to many sales so yes. that you can actually sell many. Um, and um, um, that is my favorite way to sell for sure. <laughs> um, and I think the other thing is just, you know, the, the fact that with we all have these costs anyway. We, sorry, I'm probably the only non-author on this, on this call. Oh, so you're going to be an author soon, Victoria. You are <laughs> going to be an author soon. We will make certain of that. <laughs> but but the, the thing is that whatever happens, you still have the costs. Mm. So whether you self-fund or yeah. you crowdfund for the, for it, you, you still have the cost. So it's just, you know, determination, um, you know, of how you, you know, you want to be doing it. So yeah. 
but I'm actually going to take um, a step back and um, just for those of you who are new to these sessions, I can see lots of new faces and I'm really grateful to see those. Um, probably should define what crowdfunding is. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the raising of funds from lots of small amounts from your crowd. Um, so everyone puts a little bit in and together that makes a larger amount. And um, so you can actually achieve your goals. Um, one of the things that um, um, uh, I, I always, I always cite is, yeah, you know, people think this is a new thing and certainly using the internet is a new thing, but, um, actually, uh, it's been around for years. So if you think of someone like Mozart, he had a crowd who all put little bits of money in, which funded his music. So they crowdfunded music. Or if you think of, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to test the age of some of the people on here, Marillion, the band, they were the first of this um this generation of crowdfunding they actually crowdfunded their tour and first and then their album um and that was i think back in the 80s so um for some I of love you the 80s <laughs> <laughs> i'm having a look on these pictures and some people i don't know would they even know the 80s so really my age um but yeah so it's you know it, it's been around for years but it, the the modern day is is certainly sort of you know in the last and, and really in the last 10 years is where we've seen the explosion. And so you, nowadays we have online platforms and you'll have heard of Kickstarter and Indiegogo and they facilitate the process. We have social media, we have emails, we have newsletters to promote the campaigns. So, but, um, you know, I think one of the things that I'd like to ask you, um, Charmaine, is mm -hmm. how can an author use crowdfunding, not just to fund the book, but also to build a community of readers and supporters. Yeah, I love that. And I'm going to get all of you to engage in the chat box. So as we're as we're talking about this, feel free to add into the chat box the ideas that are coming up for you and the um, the different ways that you think crowdfunding could support a book. So some of the ways that I just want to talk about some of the ways that um, people uh, crowdfund and what they crowdfund for is often the production of the books, the whole um, the editing process, the um, design, graphic design, the uh, layout, coaching. Many people have contracted coaches to help write the book or to help the, get the book into production. Some people will actually have consultants or coaches that they bring on board to help them with their bestseller launches. I know Kelly, you do a lot of that incredible work. Then we have people who um, might be contracted to help with the, oh, the marketing, the bulk buy sales, the list goes on. Feel free to type in the chat box some of the other expenses that you think could be covered by crowdfunding. There, then there's also things like virtual book tours and in-person book tours. And yes, Gloria, public relations. We hired a PR person when our first book came out, a book coach. Um, we also looked at when we were doing our book tours, being able to do a series of events on our tours and getting our books into schools and into libraries. And sometimes people hire a salesperson for that. The other cool thing that I'm seeing, I'm just going to use Kelly for an example for a moment. Kelly's a long, long time dear friend of mine. And one of her books, um, well, she's got several books, but one of the campaigns that Kelly did that I loved is she has a blanket called A Blanket of Love. They're absolutely beautiful. And she's created products around her books and around her mission and movement. And this is what we see a lot of authors doing now, looking at things like calendars and training programs and journals, uh, having their book in uh, a variety of formats. So I wanted to cover that first. And then Victoria, I'm gonna go back to your question because I went on a bit of a tangent. I get excited talking about all the ways, oh, the crowd, that was the other piece. So there's that some of what a crowd fund can cover. That's that financial piece. But then there's the whole element of when you, when you, when you have your book, you've got to launch it. And we need to find ways to get our book in front of more people than just our friends and family. Would you all agree with that? That our friends and family are gonna buy books because they love us, they're gonna support us. But at some point, 
um, you know, I remember one of my family members who came to lots of my book signings said, I have so many of these now. <laughs> and I was like, yay. And then I also felt, almost felt a little bit bad for her because she was coming to all my events supporting me, but she's got a lot of my books, the same book at the time. So we need to find that extended audience. This is what crowdfunding does beautifully. And when Victoria and I started working together on this, I got really excited about this because this solves an issue that a lot of authors have, which is a crowd, building a community, building your base of readers before the book is even done. So you get to a point where people are thinking, when is that book going to be available? When can I grab that from the bookstore or Amazon? Or when can I put my iPods in and listen to it um, through an audiobook? You have this crowd that are helping you. And Victoria, you talked about something really interesting. Um, you talked about one of the other benefits of crowdfunding. So you've got the funding piece that all authors can use. Then you've got this building of a community and a crowd, which all of us need that needs to be extensive and where we're where we are leaning into other people's audiences. Then you talked about the importance of market research. I had never really given that a lot of thought until you raised this. So tell us a little bit about that benefit because that's an important one for authors. Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the things that you can do through your crowdfunding campaign is you can see what people are interested in. So we'll talk about perks a little later, because I know that's one of the questions we didn't address last time that I know people are very interested in. But with perks, what you might want to do is you might say, here's the book and here's the book with the calendar or here's the book with a journal. And you have those as two of your perks. And you might see that everyone wants the one with the calendar. Nobody wants the one with the journal. And that shows you that your target audience, that's what they want. And so the mm -hmm. benefit of doing that is you don't go off and print thousands of journals that actually your target audience don't want. You actually give the calendar, which is what they want. So this gives you a chance to talk to your target audience to really refine and, and get your messaging um, right, but also to get your, your, what you're offering right. So mm -hmm. in, in that example calendar. And even down to... Um, you know, one of the things that is really important is to warm up your audience. And so, you know, you'll be sending out emails, getting for them to get to know you, to know about your book. But one of the things you could do is if you um, have raised, say, the funds, I know we've got somebody who wants to do an illustrated book here. Um, it might be that you have two illustrators and you don't know which one to go with. So you might actually email everybody in your email list and say, I'm trying to decide between these two illustrators. I have this illustrator or this illustrator. Which one do you think would be, which one would you prefer and why? And get your audience to come back and tell you. Now that's free market research, first off, with the people you want to know. It just helps you pre or prevents you from making mistakes. Um, and so that's that's one of the things I absolutely love um, that you can do as part of this process. Yeah. Speaking of market research, I was talking to an author recently that's considering having several what we call wraparound products for their books. So they were looking at having um, I would call it a journal because there was going to be a place, uh, maybe a workbook is a better way to so it'd be a, like a workbook or a journal. But she wanted to pull out um, inspirational quotes from her book. And so every page, there'd be 365 pages, one per day and an inspirational quote. Uh, and then when she was, she was thinking, I wonder if people want to write that though. Do people want to have something that they write in or do they want something different? So I thought this is a great way with a crowdfund, which I think she's going to look at for her to be able to go out and test with the crowd that she's building through the crowdfund. Do people want a journal because, you know, or a workbook? Or is it in a printed version? Or is it something online? Because we see all the time, and I have done it. I will put up my hand and say, you know, I have done, I still have t-shirts from my book tour. I use them for packing. Don't do t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people like t-shirts, but yeah, they came in very handy when we packed from Vancouver to, <laughs> to Toronto area. T-shirts will work well for some books, but we had these T-shirts for our tour, which are actually awesome T-shirts and I love them, but we did, we bought too many. 
We didn't know how many people would or wouldn't like t-shirts. And this was not a crowd fund, but it was a great learning for me to look at, does my audience wear t-shirts? Like, are they, are they t-shirt folks? And so this, this is where I think this particular author could really look at that market research around what product do the readers really want? I love that, Victoria, you can test two different covers. That's brilliant because mm -hmm. we know how important. Judy and Kelly, I'm going to put you on the spot for a minute. How important is a book cover for a book? It's very important. I mean, that's the first thing people will look at. So if your cover is not inspiring for the person to open the book, then you're not going to sell many copies of the book. Yes. Thank you, Judy. Kelly, what's your take on a book cover? Well, I, I love how Victoria said, perhaps you can test two different covers. So one of the things that I always suggest my client do is put two or three covers up on Facebook or LinkedIn and get people to vote on them because they are the buyers. You're not the buyer, even though you love something, your buyers might not like it. So I am book cover is extremely important. So I always say get it done as soon as you can get some feedback. And it's a great way for people to get to know about your book too, which is important. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're educating it and you're promoting your book in the same time. I remember when we it, um, came out with my first children's book, my illustrator is actually my best friend for my whole life. We met when we were five. So the illustrations are so important to me. They're all illustrations with love. And we were, there was three of them that we really loved that we thought would be great for the cover. And we thought, you know, that it was a children's book, but who is the audience is the educators, the parents and the grandparents. They're the ones that can buy the book. So we went out to them and it was really interesting, the book cover, and they talked to their kids and grandkids. And I'm so glad we did that because the book cover that we chose was based on the feedback from the actual readers and the and the the people who would be absorbing the book it wouldn't have been the cover it wasn't my favorite image i love the image my favorite image is the one that i wanted on the cover so this is really important what we're talking about right now and i love that you're bringing up this using a crowdfund victoria to test different elements of your book so brilliant um i wanted to ask you talk a lot, Victoria, about one of the shortfalls for uh, crowd funds and for authors is that people, A, don't know their audience and B, they're <laughs> not clear on their objectives of the crowd fund and on their big vision of the, the book. So can you talk a little bit about that before we yep. get into perks and all the how to's? No worries. So defining your objectives is absolutely key. And risk, one thing it does is, and, and you can hear the objectives might be financial, but they also may be, you know, I want to pre-sell this number of books. I want to, you know, discover what other things. So it's not just, I want to build a, a community of a thousand people for my newsletter so I can continue talking to those people. So you can have lots of different objectives and, and that's really good to set up at the start so that everything you do works towards those. Um, but also those objectives will help you decide which platform you want to use um, mm -hmm. because, it, you know, success is around sort of selecting the right type of crowdfunding the right platform and the right objectives so you know we've got um, your objectives if if it's sort of you know to to pre-sell then you might want to do something like a rewards campaign um if you want to get your if your objective is to get your book into people who need your book mm -hmm. i was talking to a guy last thursday who is writing a book around um uh, addictions so for him, he wants to get that book out to um, as many places as possible. So he's probably going to run a donations crowdfunding campaign. Um, um, yeah, so that that one. But if you if your book is your tool to sell your business, so it's just like a conduit in, you may actually want to get investors into your business. So investors, that would be an investment crowdfunding campaign. Um, and you've got sort of things like, a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, royalties campaigns, the old Dragon's Den type, you know, or give you royalties in every sale or um, actually giving equity shares in your company. So the book is just a tiny part of that whole system for, mm -hmm. for selling your business, um, but, a, but a very key entry point. Um, so, you know, though, really your objectives will define the type of crowdfunding and, and the platform. Yeah. Um, 
And then um, I think the other thing you were saying about was target audience. So, you know, one of the things, um, everybody wants to read this book. Um, I'm Who is really your audience? sorry. Everyone. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this is, the, if you, as I call it, spray and pray, it will be very expensive and you won't have the greatest results. Yeah. I would actually say having a really tight target audience, because if you know who your target audience is and you speak to them, so um, people, when they read it, they're like, oh, wow, Judy's speaking to me. Exactly. And that personal connection will mean they really want to read your book. She understands my issues. She, th this book can really help because she knows where I'm coming from. So all of these are, are things that, that really help from getting a targeted audience. Plus, you'll save an awful lot of money um, and a lot of time because it will be focused. We yeah. had um, one person on the previous cohort, and she um, is a counselor for a grief counselor for when people lose their pets. So very unique. Now, what is it? I don't know what was it 30 40 percent of the population have pets I think it's I more like 40 to 50 now okay really yeah well, especially post-covid yeah um yeah. but you know so every, you know people with pets but your pet only dies once sorry <laughs> and so oh, you know there's only that one time and and you know that the actual grief counseling you know is not needed so you know you you can think of you know you've got that sort of group but then you've got the people with pets and then you've got, so you can see where the sort of the funnel comes in. So what you want to do is, you know, really build awareness so that people know that this exists, but it's, it's also a timely thing. So there's lots of reasons why getting that target just right is, is really important. And when I was laughing, when I was saying everyone's an audience, I was poking fun at myself because I shared this story with Victoria when I was first published my publisher asked me, she said, who is your audience? And I said, oh, Betty, it's everyone. You know, this book is for families. It's for dog lovers. Even if you don't have a dog, you know someone who has a dog. My book is about my dog, Toby. And she said, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> she said, you can't write a book to everyone because no, you'll end up with no one or a small group of people wanting to read it. It'll be watered down. The richness of your story won't come through. And I, I think I resisted that a little bit. I was, I was really having a hard time wrapping my head about, around why couldn't it be for everyone? This is one of those cases I didn't know what I didn't know. I was a brand new author. And as soon as I got crystal clear on who my audience really was, my writing improved. I, I could picture myself writing to the person that was going to be reading the book. The marketing plan was so much easier to create. The book tours, what we did, were so much, um, you know, so much more profitable. We sold more books because we were marketing in the right places. So I love that you've raised um, the objectives, and I would love, to, or the the audience, and I would love to hear in the chat box, like who is your audience? If you could just type in the chat box, if you know right now who is the audience for the book that you're writing or have written, and it can be one word or a couple of words, but who is your audience? I was just going to mention in our last cohort, um, when we went through um, defining your target audience, it was really interesting because there was actually one person who nearly writ finished writing her book, but actually when she thought about who her target audience was yep. and what, what, what she wanted them to feel at the end of the book, it actually made her go back and rewrite part of her book. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting. So, you know, a lot of this process, um, I think I actually, the more and more we work in this space, Charmaine, I realize mm -hmm. how these two are so complementary, and that the so crowdfunding mm -hmm. helps the writing process and sort of the writing process, because you're all great writers, helps the crowdfunding process. So the synergies are, are huge. So it's, it really is a win-win. Absolutely. Creative entrepreneurs. Ooh. <laughs> great teenagers okay. yes is that is that a is that a comic book is that a tiktok book <laughs> no ma'am it's actually a leadership book for young people oh cool 
Yeah. Okay. So that's something I would love to challenge people with is just keep thinking about who is your audience? You know, what's important to them? What do they value? Because the more specific you can be on your audience, um, the stronger your book will be, but from a crowdfunding perspective, you'll start to bring in that audience. You'll be actually um, finding that the community that you build through your crowdfund is very, very targeted. And that's what we want for our book. Uh, so another question I want to ask, Victoria, you talked about the importance of objectives, like knowing your objectives. So some people, they want to generate revenue to um, to work with a professional to help them write their book or a ghostwriter, someone who helps them get their book done. Or some people might want to work with a PR person or they need help with the, the actual writing of the whole book. Can you tell us a little bit more about um, what kind of objectives should people be covering? Because typically they think about, I, I want to generate revenue to cover certain costs or I wanna build a community. Are there other objectives that we should be considering? And I would love to hear from all of you that are on today, what are your objectives for a crowdfund campaign? Is it around revenue? Is it around community? What are your objectives? So I think, um, I mean, for some of you, I, I, can see, I can see from your branding behind you that you, know, you, you offer additional services. So, things such as coaching, counseling, et cetera. So what about using this as a tool uh, to sell your services, to raise awareness of your services? I talked before about, um, from our previous cohort, um, the, the, the woman who uh, counsel, grief counselors for pet loss. Well, you know, the, as I say, it's a very time sensitive thing, but by raising awareness, she now knows that anybody who loses a pet, that they will say, oh, you've got to speak to this person. She's the expert in this space. So you might use it to raise awareness. You might use it to sell your services. So for example, um, um, you might decide to um, offer your book and then offer a, um, an hour counseling um, with, the, with the books. That could be one of your perks. Now you're making revenue for your hour counseling that you would have done anyway, but you're using as promotional tool that builds that relationship up that person who you may never have reached before. And we're, we're all much more comfortable on these zoom calls now. So the person you may never have reached before has had one service from you and go, mm, I found that really valuable. And that book was really useful. I'm going to book more. So one of your objectives may be, I want to, you know, have a, a financial goal of the revenue that I get from my crowdfunding campaign. So that's above and beyond what you raise from your crowdfunding campaign. You're using this as a marketing tool to promote. Um, one of the other things um, that I've seen people do is, uh, as you said, is to, to sell other products. Um, and I know I sort of turn my nose up a little bit at T-shirts. Unless, unless it makes really good sense for your, for your book um, or your business, it really is a death by t-shirt because when you look at the cost to, de to design a t-shirt, the cost to make the t-shirt, mm -hmm. and then bear in mind how many different sizes and shape of t-shirt is. Do you do a male t-shirt? Do you do a female t-shirt? Do you, um, you, you end up just, um, you, what you have to charge you just cover your costs. So I'm just, I just want to just make sure I kill the t-shirts one. I think it's fine if you're face to face. Um, but the other thing it does give you, and this could be an objective, um, it gives you something to talk about. Now mm -hmm. you cannot do PR based on the fact that you have a crowdfunding campaign. You could have done that 10 years ago, but crowdfunding isn't novel. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is as part of your promotion, you might want to reach out to the local TV, the local radio, find that hook and get you out there. And mm -hmm. you can talk about sort of what's in your book. You may not have even finished writing your book. In fact, I think Charmaine, you said you did this and you hadn't finished writing your book. Um, but what you might want to do is have an objective of, I want to be on 
three radio stations. I mm-hmm. want to be in, you know, these two magazines. So it's part of your crowdfunding campaign, but the objectives are actually going to have a far broader benefit. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Actually, I wanted to um, speak about speak about the importance of media and podcasts. When my book on Toby's terms came out in 2011, I mean, podcasts weren't really out. Blog talk radio shows were the big things on the online platforms. And so before my book came out, I had four, I think, believe it was 42 interviews. And, you know, the day that the book launched, it just, went bestseller. Um, Actually, it was before it launched, it went bestseller repeatedly with the pre-sales. And it was because there had been so much chatter about the book, and it was still being completed. I was still writing parts of it, and it was going through editing, but I was talking a lot, not just about the book, about, but about my why. And Victoria's going to talk about your why in a moment, but talking about my why, what was important to me about this book, talking about the writing process, talking about everything I had learned about this dog. And what what I discovered is that people want to know the person behind the book. People want to know the person behind the book. That's you. And a crowdfund actually gives you an opportunity for an audience to get to know you. I have found that people love to good gossip about people as much as there might be negative gossip in the world. There's a lot of good gossip. Many of us, and I can see lots of you on the call that um, that I've met before that like to be a champion for other people. When something is someone is, that you know is doing something good, you love to get out there and good gossip it and, and share their story or message with the world. That's what crowdfunding can also help you with because you're building this group, this community of champions. Um, Victoria, was there anything else you wanted to say about perks um, at this point? Because you were talking <laughs> about just, perks. So I just I'm thought I don't want to leave that I'm hanging because so... I know it's a biggie for you. And I know those were questions that came up on our last call. So yes. we promise to talk so, more about that. Yeah. So perks, as we call them, and the structure of them is really important. You know, are you, we've talked about, you know, you might use this to sell your business. Um, so in that case, you might offer the book and the training session. Um, you know, and that's a high value item. So we want to make sure you have three to five perks at a range of price points. So, um, you know, your, your lowest one might be, you know, the physical book and you might, you know, sign it inside so that people get to, um, you know, have that personal connection, um, and then right the way up. So you might add additional, additional items in there. You might want to, um uh you know then it might make sense to have swag if you if you want people i do baseball caps because there's no sizing if that's appropriate for your target audience if you're in the uk and you're targeting 50 year old men don't do baseball caps um but for everybody else um you know that's the sort of thing so you might want to do it especially if you want that branding out there um but you want to make sure there's a sort of a, a real um price point the, the interesting thing is The average perk price, you know, you see on some of the platforms can be as low as $10. It's where the choosing the right platform is right. One of the uh, platforms that we we, um, have been pointing people towards, the average perk value is about $84. So that allows you to actually give some quite, you know, in-depth items um, that you can actually give out to people. So um, getting that range of price points is, is really important because you also don't want to leave money on the table. If you just have one thing, like a $25 book, then the, what you're stuck with is, you know, perhaps somebody wants more, but the most that they can back you is $25. Mm-hmm. And remember, this is backing. This is not buying. Yes. So one of the key things you get out of this is if you just need it to print your book, and you want to print it on decent quality paper with a decent cover. What you would say to people is you're backing this book. You say you're backing this book today, but you're not going to get it till May. And what that means is you get your money. You're able to go to the book publisher and go, here's the money, publish these books. And then you can either ship them out yourself or use a pick and pack um, to actually ship it out on your behalf. But it means, and then all the way along, 
you're saying to people, hey, the book publisher's publishing. You might even go along if, if you're able to and have a photograph. Look, this is the book being published. You get people excited about even getting the book. But that's one of the huge things that you can get because you get your money before you actually have to give the perk out. So, yeah. um, but it is backing. Now I have had a few campaigns. So I'll, I'll just give you, this is, I know it's not a book, it's a watch. I apologize, but I, this was a crowdfunded watch, which I backed. I actually got the watch three or five months late because there was an issue with it. Mm. But all the way along, the company that I backed told me what was going on and told me what the delay was. And we've seen some really wacky timelines for production of things. And to be able to tell people, look, I'm sorry, there's a delay. This is the reason, you know, they printed it on black paper and the black print didn't show on black paper. I don't know. I mean, I'm just putting things out, but you, you mm. never know what the delay is, but you can have that communication. Yes. And again, you're continuing to build that relationship up with everybody. So yes. that's just one thing I just want to say about, um, about that. The other thing is um, the pricing is key. So there's a lot mm. of gamification with crowdfunding. So you might have early bird pricing to get people in on your first day or in the first week. And then by getting people to back your campaign, they will tell their friends about it. So for example, if you know the cost to produce your book is $10 and you're selling it for $20, it might be that on the first day, you do a super early bird of $12. You're still making a profit for the first 10 people. And then you, the early bird might be $15. You're still making $5. And then the um, crowdfunding price might be 18. So they're, they're still getting a deal. You're not having to pay multiple levels in between, um, but you're, you're, making, you're still making your $8 on it um, and covering all your costs. <coughs> um, but it's, you can see that somebody might go in and go, oh, I missed the super early bird. I want to get the early bird. So you might have 40 early birds and you get them in there. And then people see that and success breeds success. And if you look at um, the likes of Kickstarter and Indiegogo, I mean, yes, they are ubiquitous. It's the duopoly. Mm -hmm. But one of the challenges is that you have to work out a shipping price. So this is why I'm saying we, we, we have identified some other platforms where the shipping price is separate. So that allows you to sell globally um, which really helps some people's target audience, mm -hmm. but also you're not fiddling around going, mm, yes, okay, that's going to Canada. So that's going to cost this much, but that's going to the UK. So it's going to cost that much. So just the, the other side with perks is actually the shipping and, and you just need to, if you're not using some of the platforms we recommend, you just have to factor that in. Mm -hmm. uh, really, really helpful. And, and with perks, while you're on the topic of perks, if you're going to be pursuing a crowdfund, which we hope you do, there's great, uh, one of the things we love about doing programs with authors is the, our last cohort, the energy and the ideas that came around building the, the, the perks. You know, there's more to perks as Victoria said than just the book. And I was, so I was perusing some crowd funds that came across my desk recently on social media. And here were some fun ones that uh, one of the, one campaign, it was somebody who was writing on leadership and, and sort of um, leadership in the world we're living in now. One of the lower cost perks, it was basically, um, you got a print copy of the book, a P, uh, an EPUB of the book. I think the book was in two or three formats and you got a personal thank you phone call from the CEO, the author of this book. That was the most popular perk. And all these people were going on saying, this was so awesome to wake up and have this voicemail from, you know, I can't remember the author's name. And I thought, isn't that interesting? So, you know, connection, that might not fit for another audience or for your book. But one of the other cool ones that I saw, Victoria, was um, a virtual lunch. So it was like $500. Mm. The pledge was $500. You got 10 books. Um, to be sort of, they called it an ambassador of the book. So you, so that perk for $500, you got 10 books and a virtual lunch with the author. And so they basically, I don't know, use some kind of food service, 
sent the lunch to the person at the prescribed time, it was off the charts, how many virtual. And when you think about a cost perspective, it's actually a very low cost. Now you got to factor in your time, you're showing up for a 40 minute lunch or however long it was, but that was so popular. Again, connection is what the theme was. And then there was another one who, um, I can't remember if it was a basketball player, it was an athlete. They had um, dinner, it was like $5,000 or something. And it was, yes, it was basketball, dinner on the court. And mm. so <laughs> dinner on the court and the, the player was on the court and the family was, I don't know, I guess at home in their kitchen and they zoomed in. But it was, yeah. again, these, these connection perks, Victoria, I'm really seeing this trend for how important that human connection is in crowdfunding. Oh, I, I completely agree. And I, I think the interesting thing with that one is, especially with the likes of Uber Eats and, and yeah. the other different versions, it's actually relatively easy to do. You know, if you if you most cities, most towns have some sort of delivery service, even if it's just getting a pizza, if the worst comes to the worst, you are able to do that. So, um, you know, that's great. Um, I We had a question. In fact, I was halfway through answering yeah. it when you um, you asked my last question. I didn't get to finish it. But the, the book groups, I think that's really interesting. And that that mm -hmm. could be whether you're um, you've got a book group from a, a nonfiction or a fiction side of things. Um, so what you could actually do is have a, a book group package yeah, yeah. where you ship out 10, 15, 20 books, and then you agree a date and then you hop on and then you can zoom with the whole group and you can have the discussion about the book. I mean, how valuable is that? Because if you think historically, people didn't have that relationship. And yeah. one of the things that we talk about is the process to actually run your crowdfund campaign and collecting those emails. And that allows you to develop that relationship that before was just, you know, a meet and greet in a, in one store and a small number of people get to meet you, but most people don't get to meet the author and um, it's just really valuable. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a couple of questions that came up. Do we want to handle the questions now, Victoria, or did you want to talk a little bit about planning and then come back to questions? Um, 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 why don't we, uh, do you want to ask the questions? So, sure. uh, Deb, Deborah said, can you use crowdfunding months for more mm -hmm. than one project? If you have, uh, more than you need for the one you crowdfunded for. So, um, one of the things that I often look at is how much do you need to do what you want to do? That's your sort of basic goal, but you might have a stretch goal. So it may be, all right, I need 10,000 to get my book out. But if I have 15,000, then I can do the workbook or I can do the something else. Um, and it's all about telling people what the use of funds is. So you might go, hey, I've hit my goal. I'm at 10,000. Thank you very much. I'm now able to do this. Yeah. Okay, I've hit my 15,000. Yay, I'm now able to do this. And so one of the things that um, people... Um, have to be aware of is this is all about being authentic and being transparent mm -hmm. and so this gives you a wonderful tool to be to to do so um but just keep telling people you know what those are but also people expect you to get paid for the work you are doing so you know make sure you know there is some there is some money in there for you I mean <laughs> you know that, that there's a there's also a bit of cost of raising capital so mm -hmm. you know um when you're looking at your sort of use of proceeds, make sure it's you know fully weighted, as I would say. Yeah. And one of the questions you were talking a little bit earlier, um, Victoria, about the different platforms, and you know, there's the platforms that are rewards platforms. There's the platforms that you keep all the money. We have a, a lot of our authors right now are using a platform where they keep what they raise. But there's platforms like the two that you mentioned, um, Indiegogo and Kickstarter. <laughs> I think that you only keep if you get it all, is that right? Yeah, so I have to, yeah. so so interesting. So um, uh, Kickstarter, you if you don't hit, so the, the thing about Kickstarter and Indiegogo, uh, the, the big duopoly, so if you don't hit your goal, um, you have to give the money back. Um, so, you know, ah, um, <laughs> so um, whereas the, the platform we were just talking to about, um, you can actually draw down your money daily, weekly, mm -hmm. monthly. So you can actually fund your project and still run the campaign at the same time. So you can run the two concurrently, as long as you can still deliver your book at the end. 
Like if your goal is 10,000 and you raise 5,000, can you still deliver your book? Because what you don't want to do is take the money, spend the money and still not be able to deliver your book. Because I trust me, if you do that, you will never be able to run a crowdfund again because your, your, you know, your name will be mud. Mm -hmm. Um, But the other, the other thing, and it's to the point you were, you were making, Indiegogo has just introduced this new thing called tipping. And wow. at the end of um, your backing and you've put your credit card in, it says, would you like to give a tip? Now, when you hear the word tip, you know, you think of in a, in a restaurant, um, you know, in, in the cultures that tip, usually the tip goes to the waitresses. So you would think the tip goes to the author, the creator. No, not on on Indiegogo. They keep it. So they keep the money from the platform that the the creator is paying and they keep the money from the backer. So they do very nicely out of it. Um, Whereas, you know, something like Crowdfunder, um, the tip goes to you as the creator and can actually make your fees including your PayPal fees, because there are certain things that are certain in life, like death and PayPal fees, they can actually wipe out those PayPal fees from the tipping. So, you know, just interesting little nuances of the little platforms out there. Yeah, when we Uh, think about, Victoria, I just wanted to add on that, like one of the, the shortcomings or where we see authors, you often get these rescue calls, I'll call them, where someone has launched a campaign not fully knowing everything you're talking about today. Um, and, and so they, they've they missed some important steps. One of them is Victoria's 90 day strategy on planning, um, which I know she'll speak to later, but um, a, big, a, a big problem can be choosing that wrong campaign. Uh, we've seen that where, a lot, where authors wanna launch their book on say, GoFundMe, which is a great campaign for, or a great platform for certain projects, but not so great for a book. Is that right? Yes. So, I mean, it is, it is horses for courses. In fact, I'm just answering one of the questions in the chat. Sorry. Um, um, and, um, uh, I think it's over 37 countries. So, um, uh, yes. So, um, uh, Sorry, I shouldn't. I shouldn't be doing two things at once. <laughs> um, sorry, answer. Could you mind asking that question there's, again? There's a big problem with people's campaigns oh. is they've chosen yes. the wrong platform. And Go uh, GoFundMe was an example. Great platform, oh, but yeah, not for yeah. a book uh, campaign. No, no. I mean, so GoFundMe um, is you know if you've got a cause. Um, it is pretty well known in North America. It's not appropriate in other parts of the world because people aren't as familiar with GoFundMe. Um, but people sort of get the concept. So I get it. If you mm-hmm. if you want to get a pair of, uh, you know, do something for a charity, then that might well be the way. But um, I probably wouldn't look at it for, for a book. Um, and that is often the issue. But I think that the point that you were making is the process so we always recommend a 90 days preparing a campaign, really getting your crowd warmed up so that when the campaign launches, people are in there straight away backing the campaign. Um, if you if you hit 11% on your target of your target on the day one and a third in the first seven days, you should hit your goal. So that's what the metrics say. Um, and you've just got to sort of um, make sure that you have everything in place uh, beforehand. And, um, I know I was looking at a camp, I was asked to look at a campaign recently and there was a lot that was really good. There was a video, which is a great way for people to get to meet people. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a campaign page. There were, you know, there's a lot of the things that were right, but they hadn't done the warm up um, of the audience. And a third of the money is going to come from people you already know. A third is going to come from the people they know. And a third is going to come from other activity. So you want to warm up all of those people. And as Charmaine said, you don't want to just be selling books to your sister all the time. You know, your sister does it because she loves you, but you really want to get that book out there much more broadly. So, but that third that know you and they can still share with their networks 
who can then share with their networks. So, you know, it it's getting that cascading out and it's there's a really clear process to actually build that crowd, get that crowd aware. We talked before about how we emails. The reason I like emails is it used to be that you would see something seven times and act on it, but now they say it's 21 times. And if you think about advertising, <clears throat> the cost of placing adverts for someone to see something 21 times, that's really expensive. Whereas email campaigns, much more cost-effective. We, um, I actually, I apologize. I'm going to bring my little monkey. So we use uh, MailChimp. Um, don't ask me why, but it, they sent me a MailChimp with a naked bottom with a heart on it. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, so we use MailChimp. It's easy to use and um, it's cost-effective. So we can do a landing page. We sign up, get people's emails, and then we drip emails out and we tell them, you know, we might tell them your story. So you might you might go out with what's your story? What made you write this book? Why, you know, get that personal connection. Then this, the next one might be, you know, who this book is for and what you want, the impact you want to have from this book. The next email might be the additional sort of, as we talked about the journals or the other sort of tools that you can get with it, or is it part of a series? Um, we've had some people in our cohort actually put a precy of the book in. Some people put a little, a, a sort of a few paragraphs. So people get to know your writing style and go, oh, this is really exciting. I want to, I can't wait to read it. So you're doing all these things to get people really excited so that when you launch your campaign, that they're ready to go live. Um, that, you know, you get that 11% and that 33%. Victoria, with the planning, there's a couple of questions that came up that I'm just going to like weave into what you're talking about now because they fit beautifully with planning of the different steps in crowdfund. Deborah had asked um, the name of the company that you were talking about that you can draw from daily or weekly. Was that Crowdfunder? Yes, it's Crowdfunder. So the company is not very good with the letter E. So it drops, <laughs> it, it, has, um, it has Fundraiser, which is its GoFundMe equivalent, but Crowdfunder, that platform is the one that has um uh it gives you the tips so you get the tips they have a free uh, and a paid program as well um so that's a crowdfunder and they're also the platform that calculates the shipping yeah so i saw you saw that judy yeah because trust me it is such a brain ache to work mm. out and then it's sort of like oh do i charge this amount okay if you're in US, you get pay this. If you're in Canada, you pay this. If you're in Europe, you pay this. It just, yeah. and then you have this mess. And one of the reasons we say three to five perks is we live in a complex world. We want to keep it simple so that people can um, make an easy decision. Because if you give people too many choices, they'll take none. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a mentor of mine said years ago confused minds never buy. And I, that, that motto is through my head every time I write an email campaign or, or a book. So we want to make it clear for people. Uh, one of the other questions that came up was around promotion, which is a part of the, uh, one of the latter part, later parts in that 90 day planning. When you're in the early days, you're starting to think about your marketing plan, your communication plan, having a landing page for your campaign the graphics that you're going to need. Um, some of the ways that I'll just give a few tips here around what we're seeing our authors do to market their campaigns. Uh, Victoria is a very strong proponent of having a good video. <laughs> and she, so good video meaning, it doesn't mean that you have to go rent out a studio, but it can't be on a cell phone when someone's hand is bouncing up and down or the wind is so strong you can't hear what's saying because people will tolerate a lot, but bad sound quality is not something they'll stick with for very long. Victoria, you talk about making sure in that video because that's often the first place, if I can quote you, the first place that people will see you as an author beyond the image of the book cover with your name on it is that's the first time they might yeah. hear your voice. I look at it as a handshake. I look okay. at it as you sort of when you meet somebody and you shake their hands. That's that's what I, you know, I like about it. But back to the sort of the shaking, 
what mm -hmm. you want with your video, you want it to be good, but not really good. If it is super professional, they're going like, why do they need the money? Mm -hmm. So you want it to be good because you want, it's a part of your proof points. Mm -hmm. It's part of that trust that people know you can deliver a good quality book because you can deliver a good quality video. I know it might sound like video book, but actually this is, this is building up that trust amongst your backers. And so they want to be able to hear you. They want to be able to see you. They want to know that the picture's pretty good. I'm a big advocate of uh, pieces to camera. So what we're doing right now. So people, you actually looking straight at the camera and talking to the camera builds trust. Um, and especially with some of the books that we're talking about, that's absolutely vital. Um, but yeah, you, you know, agree with you, Kelly, if it is, if it is sort of like um, uh, a world-class, you know, Oscar winning video, people are going to go, mm -hmm. why, you know, the, the other way they'll look at it is this person's going to waste money. So they're going to spend money flippantly. You want to show you being sort of wise with your choices, you know, your, your, you're really thinking carefully about where you're spending your money. So just, uh, um, yes. So one thing with a video producer, and I've done videos anywhere from, I think the cheapest I ever did was $500. And the most expensive was 63,000 for a crowdfunding video. And I have to say the 63,000 wasn't that much better. <laughs> no, it was, but I mean, it was, I don't know if it was sort of like 126,000 times better. Um, anyway, um, but the one thing I would say about, you know, for, for you, to find your video producer, um, have a look locally because you want them to be able to film you locally. That's going to keep costs down. So that's definitely the first thing I would say. The second thing is if budgets are tight, go to your local college um, and see if there's a filming program there. Um, I actually did it. I did a one for the Calgary Boys Choir. And I used, um, actually it was a high school kid. He now is working in LA as a professional videographer, a, a filmmaker, sorry. Um, but I used him 10 years ago. And I think he was, you know, he was, you know, I think he was bidding us at something like $26 an hour or whatever. He did a really good job. It was, it was a good video. It wasn't great. It was good. Um, but we were able to give him access to all that content that he could use for his portfolio that enabled him to go to university that enables him now to work in LA. So I would always say use a bit of reci reciprocity here. You know, if you can't afford, you know, a, a professional videographer and you had to use a local student, then make sure it works for them as well. And I would always say when you can afford a professional videographer, go back to them and pay them a full a full wage so just just to waste it but there's many ways to skin that cat yeah yeah yes i agree and with your marketing this is where you can lean on your community you can lean on experts you can follow what other like i always say if you want to learn how to do um crowd funds and what resonates with you and what doesn't resonate with you also go on and look at other people's crowd funds. That's one of the exercises Victoria and I do in our programs is encourage people to go and look at different author crowd funds on different author platforms to see what other people are doing and what seems to be landing out there um, in the market. But the planning and having a well thought out marketing strategy in addition to every step of the the process is really important, as is writing the book. Many of the authors that we work with are you know, really bringing their book to life. So they're working with people like Judy to help get their book written. They might be hiring um, someone to actually help pull the story out of them. They might have written their book and then they're working with someone like Kelly, who is a genius at bestseller launches. So every one of us is going to be at our own place. But what's really critical is that you look at your book as a big project. You know, it's not one little thing. It's not a thing. It's a big project and it has a life beyond those covers. And then if you think about all the different steps, I promise you, you will have such a solid plan that not only helps you launch your campaign, it helps you with making your book a business. It really, really does. Yeah. I'm just mm -hmm. mindful of the time. Um, 
So I know for some people, you know, and, and this is success. Some people you're going to think, you know, crowdfunding funding is not for me. And um, if that's what we've achieved today, I still see that as success because I'm passionate about crowdfunding and um, I really want to make sure that, um, you know, everybody considers it as part of their journey, but it's not right for everybody. Um, and so, but for some people I know they want to sort of dip their toe in a bit further. So can I, do you want me to share? Yeah, I think I give you, did I give you the be? power? Screen give me the share, power. yes, I gave you the yeah. power. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna share my screen. So can everyone see my, mm -hmm. okay. So um, so we have um, uh, uh, our crowdfunding for authors program. You've heard us mention it. Um, as you know, we've, we've had um, a cohort go through and um, it's just, I don't know how you feel Shami, but it was, I just really enjoyed that because we got such a tight knit cohort from it. Yeah. Um, and actually, it's all they're about still helping each other because we have one that, just launched and she, she is following everything Victoria said and it's just we're you know we're seeing it in action it's just beautiful to watch um she is well on her way um just incredible to see so yes yeah um and this is all about getting your crowdfund managed planned and launched um one of the things though that we have um really come to understand is that there are many ways that we can help you um, and one is just, we have a crowdfunding community. So the, the crowdfunding hub, my, my business, um, the gratuitous advertising behind me, we have a crowdfunding community. Um, we also have a subsection of crowdfunding for authors community. So this is a peer group um, support. We're actually in the process of migrating it from one platform to another. Um, and so, um, you know, if this is something of interest to you, please let me know. And um, as soon as that new cohort, uh, the new um, platform opens, um, we can we can get you in. But that's a space where you can, if you're still not sure and you've got questions, that's a great place to ask them. Um, and also to get feedback. I mean, my my team, you know, I have eight members of my team, so we all understand crowdfunding pretty well. Uh, but it also gives you access to other authors and to sound ideas out. So. That's what we have for the crowdfunding for authors uh, uh, community. We also provide online training and support, um, and that includes a short course. So we have coming up on the 14th of March, a, um, a two hour short course that literally walks you through um, the, that 90 day process. Um, and I've got a slide on that next. And then we are also signing up our spring cohort. So if you feel you, you know, this is absolutely for you, but you want support on the way. And one of the things that we found is that that accountability. Yeah. So making sure that, you know, each week you, you're, you're on to the next stage and you can sound out people, um, you know, sharing all the content, getting feedback from us, but also getting feedback um, from your peers. Um, then the 12 week course may be of interest to you. So you've got Lots of different levels, depending on where you are and how much support you want. Oh, my golly, a bit of an eye chart. My apologies. So the short course, um, I'll read it out just for that one. It's it's a two hour course. We've made it at a time that it'll work if you're in Europe, if you're in Vancouver. We, it'll even work if you're in uh, Wellington, New Zealand, um, <laughs> although it'll be in the morning the next day. But that's it. So um, it's. From, from this point forward, it's all about getting stuff done. Both Charmaine and I are very practical, pragmatic people. We like talking because it's always good to sort of get your mind out there, but we also want to narrow it down and get stuff done. So uh, this is all about getting that strategic plan for your crowdfunding campaign. Um, and so, you know, you'll understand the key components. Um, you'll learn how to create realistic timeline, budget and funding goal for your project. Um, so just answering the budget, quick rule of thumb, because I saw that question, uh, your advertising should be about 10% of what you want to raise. So that's just a chuck that one in there, but did you say 10%, Victoria? 10? Say again? You said 10%? 10%. So okay. 
um, you'll develop a plan for building a strong and engaged community and um, you'll create appealing perks and incentives to entice backers to support your campaign and you'll walk away with a framework so that you can have your campaign page you know what makes a campaign page camp uh, compelling and then also how to leverage social media and other channels to promote your campaign that's um, 99 I'm putting a USD because I know we're in Canada but I know I think most of the people on here are are south of the border, which is why I've put um, uh, the USD price on there. Um, and then we have our cohort, um, which is a real get it done program. So we're looking to start that on March 28th. And it's a 90 minute interactive class. And it's all about um, having this team going through the process together. So in this case, we have lots of templates um, we have webinars, we have sharing opportunities so that you can set your objectives, your why, your perks, your budget, um, your target audience, all these things you've heard today, how to build your crowd, getting the right platform. Um, you know, I, I've mentioned crowdfunder because I like it and it works well, but it doesn't work well for everyone in every format. So it's really noodling down to get that right one. Mm -hmm. How to create a compelling crowdfunding video, making sure you're ready to launch and then managing your campaign once you've launched. So, you know, you'll save time, money and energy uh, by avoiding con, uh, con mistakes and myths. Uh, we're hopefully sim simplifying the whole process because we've been there, we've done that, we've bought that t-shirt. So we're just going to share that with you. Um, and, you know, take away some of that stress because you're not doing this on your own. Um, and um, just getting your questions answered and you have your built-in crowd and the support of your cohort. And exactly as you said, the campaign that was launched this week, it's been so lovely to see other cohort members just really helping and supporting and sharing. Yeah. Um, accountability is probably the key thing is it keeps you on task to keep complete your book and campaign for anybody here, um, you know, who's written a book knows that it's, you know, something else can get in the way. So we want to keep you on track, um, using proven strategies and, um, you really feel that progress and action. Um, as say we give spreadsheets, templates, and checklists, we make it super, there's a lot of fill in the gaps. Um, we make it easy for you. Um, we increase your, this is the key thing. We increase your campaign success by doing it right. This is the, the key thing is if you miss any of those steps out, it's amazing how it just reduces trust or you don't get the follow through. And so you could do many of things really well, but if you don't do everything, then your chance of success really does reduce. Um, you get ideas and suggestions from your cohort. Our la last cohort was really diverse, but mm -hmm. everyone had, was able to input in and really gain strength from each other. As I mentioned, you get access to the crowdfunding hub community. So this is even broader than just your cohort. Um, so you get that as well. And um, you can also, once you've done it once, use it again and again and again. So, you know, and especially when you've run one successful campaign, mm -hmm. you can then go back to those same people and go, I'm now doing this next thing. I'm not, and, and the people know that you say what you do and do what you say and you deliver, et cetera. And so actually the second time is going to be all, a lot easier. And then the third time is super easy. And um, we promise you'll have fun. I mean, that's. Uh... Well, and I love that you can do do more than one crowdfund. I just think about people who have a successful crowdfund. The book gets launched. They do everything that they want to do in there. And now they say, oh, I'm doing a book tour. And that's the next, um, you know, set of crowdfund or we're going to do wraparound products. So I love that it's not a one and done <laughs> that you can replicate this over and over, Victoria. Yeah, absolutely. And um, just on that, can you suggest a budget for properly launching a book and how to allocate it? I know that's something that you um, really dig into, Charmaine. Yeah, and and I know Judy has great expertise yeah. on this. Oh as yeah, well. just scroll down and, and see that. Too. Yes, yes, Judy um, can really help with this as well. She works with authors. I know for me, um, when I look at the marketing piece, and um, you know, when I did my book, I actually. Uh, wrote half of it and then I talked the other half of it because I found I'm a way better talker 
in terms of storytelling than I am a writer. And that actually reduced some of my, my, um, my editing costs because my writing was much clearer, but I needed to factor in. It really depends when you think about a budget for your book. Um, to, when we think about there's the getting the book done and then there's bringing the book to life and then there's marketing the book after it has breath. And, and so a lot of it depends on what your objectives are for the book. Are you planning on, on doing a media tour or are you planning on doing a book tour? Those have additional costs. Some authors are really just looking to get their book out there and sell it as another product within their business, for example. Some uh-huh. authors are looking to um, just sell in bulk, which is my favorite way to sell in bulk. And we talk about that in the program that Victoria just mentioned. But being able to get their book into corporations, for example, I know, Judy, you know a lot about that as well. But getting you know, those books into corporations, um, which is a different marketing strategy and has different costs. So it's really hard to say, here's what you should plan for your book, because we want you to look at it as more than just that one piece or product. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Victoria, I didn't give you a number. Were you looking for a number? No, no, I was actually going to say. But so in I our last... tell you like how, oh. what people are looking at for crowd funds, like what authors are doing. I've seen some do 7,500. That's a common number to kind of get the book. A lot of them are starting a crowd fund at partially done. Um, we see like 75 to 12, 7,500 to 12, five is a common number. Is that fair to say, Victoria, for authors? And then we've got ones we're working with right now that are at the 20, they're looking to uh, generate 25K through their fund, crowdfund. Yeah, yeah. Kind of the Um, range I see commonly. And then also how many people are in the cohort on average? So our last one, um, we we are, you know, having eight. Mm -hmm. um, And we want to make sure that we have enough people that you you get different opinions and feedback, but we also want to make sure that you have a chance to share, get feedback, et cetera. So I think we'll probably be around that number, but um, yeah. um, uh, yes, we do, Judy, and we are going to put them into the email afterwards. Although if you actually have a scooch on Eventbrite, you can actually see the links today, but um, but definitely I will uh, uh, we'll make sure that those go into the email. Yeah. Do you want me to pop the link for the March 14th one in the chat box, Victoria? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, I've got it Go handy. It. If you've got it, if you've got yeah. it to hand, yes. I just know that when you put things on the screen, it's sometimes difficult to yeah. um, share. That's Thank why I just thought see. I'd send it an email. This is the March 14th one, which is, that's the two hour, the deep dive, right? Yeah. March 14th, starting at noon PT. Okay, that's that one. And then the the bigger program, the cohort, we're going to provide those details in the um, email. emails that go out with the recording. Yeah, yeah absolutely. One, I just wanted to go back to one of the benefits that I was talking to one of our authors about is that a lot of times authors, especially first time authors, may not have an audience for their book. And I think having the support of a group of people who are in it with you is very reassuring. <laughs> because you're an instantly able, like what we found with the authors as they're launching their campaigns, they've got this built-in community already that as soon as they post it on Facebook, you know, their cohort is out there getting their campaign and their book and their story out in front of other audiences. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I just, as I say, I just loved watching all the authors interact in the last cohort it was great and um we actually had a a sort of meet up this year um and everyone was saying how much they missed each other because they (laughs) they were so used to having the regular calls so you know often we do this in in quite isolation so it's nice Mm. just to have people all pulling in the same direction all supporting each other and um it makes for you know a safe environment so um you know definitely anyway um I would just like to say thank you for yeah that's um, where I was going as well yes just thank you for being here and uh you know those of you who continue to join in and continue learning about crowdfunding because it is there's a lot to learn I'm still learning from you know there there's changes all the time in the platforms and what's working 
So really want to thank you all for being here. Thank you, Judy, for letting me lean on you with some of the, the questions that are not in my expertise and Kelly for chiming in on, on the book launches and campaigns. It, it really does take a, a team to raise your dream. I really truly believe that. And we're so excited to have amazing colleagues in our world. And I hope that you will join us. Um, we will be sending the details out for both programs for the March 14th and the larger cohort. But, um, you know, you've covered a lot of ground today and keep track of your questions. We're there to support you. Victoria, I just want to say thank you to you for being so open and transparent with the depth of information that you share. You just don't hold back. You give people tangible tools that they can start working on. And I just, mm -hmm. um, as an author, I appreciate that as an entrepreneur and, and as a friend. So thank you for just you're, you're very welcome. All your I, you know how us. much I enjoy working with you because I think we we bounce off each other well because we have both sides of the coin. So <laughs> and thank you to all of you for being yes. here. Uh, send us any questions you have, watch for the email. We can't wait to hear what you're going to create with your crowdfund in 2023. Thanks, everybody. I completely agree. All right. Take care. Take care.